Hey folks, Brian here with you again with Bubba Botanicals, and today we're going to talk about our solar heater that we just made. So let's take a little tour. I've got the whole thing taken apart for you, so you'll be able to check it out, see how it works, and then we'll do some tests. So pretty cool stuff. Let's start on the inside where, if you look over here, these are the uh, input and output of the heater respectively. You've got the, uh, the input here where it actually sucks the air in and then it blows out uh, hot air here. This is nothing more than just a simple piece of wood. Uh, it's got weather, foam weather stripping all around and it's sandwiched into the window. This holds up pretty solidly because of the design of the window sash. It kind of just kind of locks in there. So these, uh, these are just typical four inch uh, ducting dryer heating, uh, dryer vent things. Uh, these, uh, these had the little prettier finishes and like the little flaps that were here. Those are gone, and then there was some other stuff on here. Those are gone. You can see where I kind of sawed it out. The reason is that uh, with the ducting as long as it is, and we'll show that in a second, you had a lot of issues with uh, static pressure. So just even the slightest bit of pressure on this or resistance on this would have, uh, would have caused a, a real big drop in uh, airflow. So we took these off, and then uh, we kind of negotiated that we could keep them pretty just by having the blinds down, you know, like right here so you really can't see them, and then... Uh, Laura wants to put a plant over here and some other stuff. So let's go outside. Okay, so we're outside, and as you can see, this is the other side of the window here. Right over here, you can see where the uh, where the uh, air blows in and gets sucked out. This is nothing more than four inch insulated duct. You can get it from Home Depot or Lowe's or any of those places. And then over here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but we've got uh, just a four and a half inch uh, hose clamp type fitting on both of these and that's the same type of hookup that we use uh, on the heater as well. Then you follow these over to the heater you can see we've got one that goes in on the far side that's the intake and the one that blows out on the other side that's the output. Let's take a look at this heater. So what we got blowing air here is we've got a standard uh, this is nothing more than just a uh, just a, a bathroom vent, same kind that you would uh, install on your ceiling. It runs about 50 cubic foot per minute. You can get those at Home Depot for about $13, $15, something like that. Uh, but I've got some, some funky wiring here. What we've got is we've got the hot lines. Uh, I put a switch, if you look over here, and that switch, that's known as a snap disc thermal switch. That switch will turn on when the temperature around it gets to be 110 and it will turn off when it gets to be 90 so what that does is that saves me the time and effort of having to uh, to turn it on and off with it, as it gets cooler and gets lighter and darker so the glazing which is not on here right now is nothing more than a storm window that we got off craigslist for about five bucks this thing is built out of uh, pressure treated pine a three quarter inch backing and then we've got uh, a uh, half inch foam uh, rigid foam insulation on the back of there, painted black, of course, to absorb everything. And then we've got an interesting thing here. We've got aluminum screen right here, and we've got three layers of it. And each layer is about three eighths of an inch apart. And then we've painted that black as well. And you'll notice that if you go over here, the screen is way down against the batting. And as you go up, it angles up to where over here in the corner, it's actually up several inches more. And when the glazing's on here, what that does is it forces the air that comes out of here to, uh, to work its way through the screen instead of just going over or around it. It has to go through it, and when it does that, it will pick up the heat that's on here. Now, it's important to paint the screen black. You can see, you get the black screen, then you go over here. This is the uh, just the regular aluminum color. It's, it comes with called charcoal from the store, but you can actually get it a good bit darker with just some black spray paint. Uh, you don't want to use uh, any kind of grill paint. That's a no-no because it has some funky chemicals in it that off-gas for a long, long time. Regular flat black uh, bare paint or Krylon spray paint, whatever works for you, uh, just fine. And you get over here, this is a, just a standard four inch duct fitting. Same over here under this fan. And uh, what we've got is, we're gonna put this thing back together and we'll show you step by step. There's actually a plenum that goes over this to kind of deflect some of that air 
and then we'll go back inside and take a look at how it's blowing. So I went ahead and I've installed uh, what they call the plenum. Let me show you that real quick. So as you can see, look over here, this is the, uh, the blower motor. This is the vent blowing out through here. And we've got this big panel here. And it runs the whole length of that. And that's what we call a plenum. And what that does is, uh, when the air blows out of here, that keeps it from all just striking the glass. And if it did that, it would lose a lot of heat just con uh, conductively through the glass. So the plenum actually softens the airflow a little bit and directs it back out over here so it's not quite slamming up against the glass and it's much more efficient. If we didn't have a plenum here, we would lose a lot of heat just straight out through the glass through uh, conduction. So uh, if you notice around here, this is a three-quarter inch foam rubber weather stripping just stapled in towards the outside here. And then that's going to overlap our... Uh, our gap along the inside of the window and that's all the way around the unit all the way around and that's how it seals really important to have a good seal here because you're blowing air in from the house you want the same air to go back into the house don't want any leakage all that kind of thing the only exception to that is the way this is set up uh, we do get a little bit of water leakage through here so I've got a couple small quarter inch holes drilled along the bottom on the bottom of the unit there so that water can seep out as it needs to but uh, the, the air loss there is pretty negligible. So we're gonna go ahead and put the, put the glazing back on, and then we'll run inside and take a quick look at what the temperature differential is. Okay, we're back inside, and uh, we've had the heater running for about 10 minutes just to let the temperature uh, get acclimated on the thermometer. It's about 69 degrees in here, and you can see, if you look closely, that we're blowing about 110, 112 out of there. And uh, that's nothing more than just this meat thermometer being stuck down into the airflow. That's pretty cool. That's, uh, that's over a 40 degree differential, I think, if my math is right. Which I make no guarantees on that. So, uh, got the air suction going in here. It's being sucked in by the fan out there, and it's coming out over here. Now, ideally, you would want to build a much bigger collector, because I don't really have enough collection area to really blow some serious air through here and warm the house up. Uh, I only do one with that dimension because I happen to get some storm windows really, really cheap on Craigslist. I think like three or four bucks, five bucks, something like that. <clears throat> Ideally, most people are making these things uh, at least four foot by eight foot, which is standard size for the foam board as well as the plywood. And uh, the screen is about four feet wide as well, so you can do pretty well doing that. And that will kick out a lot more heat because you got a lot more hang time. So right now this thing is running pretty good. It's actually pretty warm in this corner because of the hot air blowing out. But if I was going to use a, a bigger one, which I probably will at some point, we'll, uh, we'll step up the fan to a much higher volume fan, possibly like a dryer blower or something like that. So the, uh, the uh, snap switch can be found at Granger. They're about eight bucks. I'll put a link up to that in the, uh, in the notes. And uh, that's really about it. Well, thanks for watching. If you want more information on projects like this, you can check out the website builditsolar.com. A lot of great information on there, as well as the Yahoo group, Simply Solar. You can find that on the web. And I'm not associated with those in any way, shape, or form, uh, but there's a lot of good information and a lot of really, really geeky people on there that know a lot more about doing this than I do. So I hope you found it informative, and good luck with your solar projects. Thanks. Thanks.